The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour as we start the show off today. Uh, S&P has been kind of unchanged here, did go lower, did try to go higher too. Uh, options uh, is something I wrote about uh, in the newsletter this morning. Uh, they're kind of showing that uh, there's probably a, a fairly big berm at 4400 on the S&P cash. Uh, and we tried that today um, and didn't do much. We'll uh, wait for the volume to come in today. But right now, actually fairly good, about uh, just a hair under 8 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. So not a weekday, not a W-E-A-K day. Uh, but that's kind of it. Uh, Dow, is that right? Let me update it just to make sure. Dow up uh, 97. NASDAQ off 124. So uh, in uh, Steve Rhodes' parlance, uh, Mr. Maxed, Mr. Mixed Bag himself. Uh, and uh, the Russell's off about a percent, uh, which is about 20 points. And we get out uh, to the uh, oil market uh, bouncing around 110. On it, uh, gold's up 13 bucks at uh, 1936. Silver's up six cents at 2525. Uh, the uh, Bitcoin, eh, 42,283, which is down 1400 points. Kind of languishing out here. Probably the most important thing that I watch out here today is the TLT. We had the uh, Fed uh, testimony, and we also had. Uh, one of the uh, Fed presidents uh, out talking, and she threw a bunch of cold water on uh, them not raising rates, and that kind of uh, sunk the market early after it had been up a little bit. Uh, but uh, not talking 50 point, uh, 50, uh, point uh, rate um, coming in on the 16th, but it didn't sound very dovish. Uh, basically saying that Russia would become a uh, is a much bigger deal on inflation and they would have to fight it with all the tools that they have. That kind of meant that maybe expect a, a one or two more rate hikes this year uh, than uh, previously planned. And the market's kind of trying to ignore that now. We'll see what's happening. Options, as I said, uh, pretty much show... 4,400, kind of uh, a big berm. We, we need some very good news uh, to get through that. But uh, that's kind of it on that. We've got uh, Tim Ord here in the next segment. Uh, we've got a bunch of charts I sent here, a bunch of symbols I sent him last week uh, as they were testing lows. So we'll look at uh, how he looks at price and volume on those. Uh, we have uh, one from a uh, individual. Uh, and we'll be looking at that. If you have any tickers, email them to me now, and I'll try to get to them. He, maybe he can get uh, them up and uh, running uh, during uh, the breaks, but uh, that'll be it. Anyway, we'll uh, check in with him for everything else that he sees in a general, general overlook, but that's kind of it. Let's go ahead to a little bit of history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 2004, Michael Dell, founder and CEO of Dell Computers, announces that he will step down from his role, his famous role, not a dinner role, uh, while maintaining his position as chairman of the board. Dell president and COO Kevin Rollins will assume his role. On January 31st, 2007, about a year after uh, Dell fell behind Apple in market cap, Rollins will resign and Dell will resume his role as CEO due to the poor performance of the company. He would take the company private again, clean up what he could, uh, and uh, certainly 
put uh, whatever he could underneath the uh, sweep, whatever he could under the rug to bring it public again. Uh, pretty much his, uh, when he left in 2004, it was all about cashing in, much li like uh, other big titans like Bill Gates uh, did, uh, and uh, going ahead and starting a second chapter in their life. He never really got to do that. Of course, it's uh, public yet again, but uh, there are not many people talking about it. Again, he's just trying to make sure everything goes well as he sells share, more shares all the time. Uh, you can give us a call, including uh, Tim Ord, in the next segment at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can give uh, us an email at path at tfnn.com. And that leaves us a couple of minutes here uh, to look at uh, and go back in the way back machine. And we'll go back a stunning one day. Uh, I was asked about two stocks. I was not uh, sure about what the other one is. But I was saying the one I didn't like uh, was OKTA. This one did gap down today. Uh, volume's pretty good. Looks like it's going to go back and retest 151, uh, excuse me, 152. 51, which is uh, February 24th low, so there's not much uh, there. Come on, what are you doing? Come on. Uh, why is that not doing it? Eh, do not know why. Because it locked up as why. Well. Oh, that's why, because I copied it. I pressed the uh, wrong button. So we should be able to just uh, do this. There we go, and get back to it. Uh, da, da, da. Question on MOS from Mimi. And uh, Mimi didn't say, maybe she'll email me, uh, say whether she kept her uh, uh, energy stocks or not. But, uh, MOS. Take a quick look at that. Da, da, Mosaic Company, of course, uh, this is a Russia trade uh, as they cut off uh, a, a lot of. Uh, nitrogen stuff, potash, that kind of stuff for uh, fertilizer. Uh, this thing's been kind of going up from 44 uh, bucks to 56 I wish I would have thought of it, but I didn't think about it. But uh, it started moving well. Um, looks fine. Nothing really here really to report. No real big sign of a uh, reversal yet. Um, most people don't know that Florida is absolutely large in the uh, in the nitrogen and the uh, potash business. Uh, if you uh, go about, uh, I don't know, 100 miles uh, southeast from here, uh, all the way down through Sebring and almost over to, uh, I think it's almost over to the other side of the coast. There's just a ton of it. Uh, one of my uh, race partner's uh, wives worked in this business, and they were always uh, either importing it or exporting it or moving it around or trading it. But apparently, uh, eh, all this stuff uh, does get moved around quite a bit. Uh, she does not do that any longer. But I remember she was uh, big in the company. We'll be back after this. Uh, steady as she goes. I don't see anything that changes. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Tim Ord. Tim Ord has been a market timer uh, for uh, and with a newsletter for over 30 years. Uh, been trading, I guess you said, since the early 80s. Yeah, right? uh, late, late. Well, actually, I was a stockbroker uh, in '77. That's pretty much when I started to trade. So, okay. Um, um, so, a stockbroker for several years, then. Then got out of that business and started the newsletter. So, so yeah, I've been that back in seventies, even early eighties. Technical analysis was kind of a you know witchcraft. <laughs> you know, it was it was all fundamentals back then. The witchcraft was was uh, not the preferred method of uh, market picking or stock picking. So, and now it's the other way around. Pretty much everything is technical and fundamentals. It's kind of a checklist after you've done the technicals. So, um, anyhow, yeah, you want to look at some of these charts? Yeah, we'll go ahead. Uh, sure. Let's start with the Russian chart, RSX. Yeah, okay. This this chart goes, what, 2007, whatever. And actually, I went in and put an order in to buy um, Russian index. The last low was 2009. It was 686. So I was going to just buy uh, some shares put a limit at 686. The only reason why I'm doing that, you know, well, the top is RSI there. Every time the RSI, this is a monthly chart. So when the RSI gets this low, it's really low. And all the news is out. I mean, Russia's invading, you know, uh, you know that, that, anyhow, it's old news. So it's nothing really new to, to assume. But uh, an old trader told me, you know, this says, go back, you know, and find the, the last major low. Actually, it worked on uh, gold, too, back in 2000. I think that low was uh, some like a 1984 low in gold or something. And if you did that, you would have picked the bottom. Well, this is kind of the same thing here. So uh, most likely, we're just going to probably test the 2009 low. And with the RSI, way the monthly RSI already below 30, you're pretty much done to the downside. So... The bad news is out, uh, so, um, you know, can the war drag on? You know, maybe, but 
probably on a bigger time frame, yeah, you know, I would I would say testing that two thousand nine low is a buy. That's how I'm and actually I tried to buy it, went to Meritrade, put that order in, and they wouldn't let me put the order in because uh they had sanctions on Russia. So uh, at least Meritrade wouldn't do it. Uh, I don't know if any other brokerage firms would do it, but I don't think uh nationwide you can actually buy um that Russian index at ETF. So Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, if you get, I don't know what other broker firms are saying, but they said, uh, nope, you can't do it. You can't buy or sell Russian stocks, at least through Meritrade. Well, I think so, they're halted. They're halted even in Russia. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so you could, they, 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 they don't trade there either. <laughs> yeah, I think. So, but that is yeah. interesting. Well, yeah. Maybe if that does change, then you might have found your low for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, the lows, you know, the when the you know, you know, um what like buy on news, sell on fact, um, or the other way around, uh, you know, the facts out, the is a war. So I guess once it started trading, you know, <clears throat> the damage has already been done. You know, he went from eyeballing here, it was about thirty, you know, you when I print this chart, you know, it's seven. So <clears throat> you know, and Russian economy is gonna keep going. It's not like it's going to go to zero. So, but anyhow, on the bigger time frames, I think it's a buy. So, that's my opinion. Whatever it starts trading or uh, touches that low of 2009, I think that's probably about the lowest you're going to get. So, um, mm-hmm. what else do you want to go to? I sent you over several charts. Yep. Um, um, the next one is uh, Zotus, ZTS. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I sent. This is all from my yeah, list from last Friday, right? Yeah, this is from yeah. I just I took about four of them, and they're all kind of ex- examples of the same thing I want to kind of talk about. But uh, in this, uh, you know, this is a daily chart. ZTS is a symbol, and now you had a pretty good sell off, and and finally uh, kind of had a climatic low back in looks like about January, I don't know, twenty six or so, and it rallied up. And that low is pretty high volume, rallied up, come back down. And the, actually the day before, you know, you had a big volume day. And the next day you, you had a, uh, a light volume day, but it did touch a new low. Uh, then reverse went up higher. Well, you take the low, the lowest low, and you take the volume of the biggest day going into that low. And you compare them, then you do that. And it, you make a retest of the, the previous price low, and you did that on, I don't have the date there, but it looks like about February 24th, 25th. And you couldn't, you know, you went actually below that low, so that's a new low, then you closed above it, and that's the buy signal. So and if the market can't hold below the previous low, which in this case it was that low in uh, February 24th, I say that's the date. Uh, if you can't hold both previous low, it'll attempt a reverse attempt to take out the previous high. So this particular stock has a price target around 205, which is a high back in, in a, you know, kind of early February there. Uh, so on a short-term basis, this is a buy signal. What happens when you get to 205 kind of depends on how high that volume is when you're testing that high. Uh, if it's higher volume, you'll, you'll probably eat right through it and go up to another higher high. If it's on lower volume, that that high will find resistance, and what you got then is a trading range where 205 is a resistance, and you got basically one um, can't read it, 185 as support. You know, just create a trading range. So it depends. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll get 205. Uh, depends what the volume is at that 205 range compared to the previous high. Uh, so um, anyhow, that's. Anyhow, this right now is on a buy signal, so it should work higher up to two hundred five. So, uh, go, uh, go ahead. Uh, we can go on to another one unless you got questions on this one. No, we just got a, a minute left here in this segment, so I'll see if we can't go on it. Um, what do you think about the general market with about a minute left to go? Uh, I got a buy signal on the twenty third. Next day, it you know gap down. And came back. So right now I'm still on a, a, a bullish buy signal uh, from the um, close of uh, 
what, February 23rd, you know, the next gap open was down, but it came back. Uh, so uh, we touched the previous low of January 24th, and we compare the volume as a lower low. Same thing we're doing right here, right now, but it's, it's we tested the previous low on higher volume, and the same thing happens if you can't take out the previous low and higher volume or reverse and take out the previous high. Well, the previous high on this case, at least I'm looking at the SPYs, is up around that 460 range, uh, which is basically the, um, the first of February, mid-February highs. So that's my target for up there for right now. Okay. We're going to be back in just a couple of minutes after uh, these fine words uh, with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ADC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return once again, like a patent to the Philippines, not patent, uh, MacArthur. To the Philippines. I got to keep my mixed metaphors correct. Uh, we're on the line with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle.com. He's won uh, many awards over the years for Timer of the Year and different uh, things and gold and uh, the major indexes. And you can always find him at uh, Ord Oracle.com. Uh, let's yeah, go ahead and. I got a Twitter account too. I just thought I might put that out there. 
Um, and I think Twitter's owned by the devil. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> we'll move on. Actually, I wanted, you can, wanted you to actually. Can, uh, I'm just sorry, kidding. Pardon? I'm just okay. kidding. You can. You can. Uh, you can tell us what your Twitter handle is. No, oh, it's it's uh, at Ord Oracle, I think. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I gotta look at my handle, but if you just Google uh, my name, it'll come. Uh, that that Twitter account will show up. I I post on there uh, quite a bit. Some charts I like, whatever, and it's just um, you know stuff I do in my newsletter. Sometimes it's uh, pretty good. I'll put up uh, posted on that Twitter account. So okay. Uh, anyhow, it's another way to follow me. But uh, actually, if you want to go to, um, uh, there's a inflation deflation ratio. Um, I don't know. If you, you see, I just sent it over to you. I think. I, oh, I okay. I wasn't looking at my email, so I I'll no, have it's, to go it's, check it's, that. Yeah, it's, it's on the the charts I sent over this morning. And, you know, this is P-R-I-I, then P-R-D-I. No, didn't get it. I've got um, ADP, RSX, TASC, uh, WGO, and WTS. Ah, I didn't send that over. Crap. Anyhow. You can send it during the break. We can still get to it in the next segment. All right. I'll send it over. I thought I did, but, um, okay, we did, we did Russia. Which one you want to do next? Um, why don't we go to ADP? ADP, all right. Uh, let's see, ADP, all right. ADP, okay. We, we, actually, that was a, a selling climax, and I got a little point there. It says selling climax. A selling climax when volume jumps around around fifty percent or more compared to the previous volume, and that's kind of exhaust move to the downside. So when volume gradually increases the market goes down that's usually not a good sign but if everybody heads to the exit at the same time you get this exhaustion move and that's that's when volume just jumps up and 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 everybody's talking how bad the stock is or whatever and that takes all the energy out of the market on a short-term basis so when everybody hits the sell button at the same time there's usually very little downside once that selling climax happens and that's what happened here so yeah, the selling climax, you know, probably uh, looks like about January 25th, 26th, whatever uh, that date is. And the market uh, made a lower low a couple of days later. So you use the volume as a, as a selling climax low and you use the price low as the lowest low. Uh, so anyhow, the market rallies up. If you notice, it rallies back and it goes back and tests the gap of the selling climax. Uh, I got a red line kind of. You can't see really the gap there, but there is a gap. Now, the market went into that gap and tested that gap on lighter volume, which is resistance. <laughs> so the market can't get through the gap. It'll try to go down, and, and uh, you know, it goes whatever it go. You know, it goes through the least resistance area. So if it can't get through the gap, it'll go back down to the previous low. Well, the previous low is that January low. When we test that low, you know, it looks like about uh, February 25th or whatever. And it tests that low price low uh, and on much lighter volume because you compare the volume to the sun climax volume. So it can't get through that low. So where's it going to go? Well, it's going to go back uh, to the previous high. Well, the previous high is back to the gap area again. Now, the more times you, you know, that's the minimum upside target is around 210. But the more times you test a support or resistance level, or a gap level is considered resistance, uh, the more chances it's going to go through. So this time, uh, up, uh, that gap may not hold as resistance. Uh, so I, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know what the volume's going to be there, but if the volume's lower than that first gap test, chances are it'll be resistance. But if it's equal or greater, it will probably move on and, and pass it and probably go higher. Uh, so you got a big base here, a decent base anyhow. It's about a month long. And uh, made an attempt to take out the previous low, couldn't do it. So uh, I'm thinking it's probably going to get through that gap and, and go up higher. How much higher is hard to say, but it's got enough cause there to, uh, to you know, to probably you know rally in the 230s or even higher. There's a resistance up around 235. That could be an upside target for that one. So 
Um, market actually looks pretty good, uh, roughly speaking here, but it depends how the volume is going forward from here. Um, yeah, I, I've been long the S and P since the, uh, January twenty third, and uh, to keep this market going higher, we need volume to push it higher. And so the key is how the volume tests these previous highs on these stocks. You know, if the volume's not there, then then you probably got a huge trading range, kind of like the same uh, same with that last stock we looked at. If we can't get through uh, 210 on this ADP thing, then probably we're going to go back down to the previous low again, which is the uh, high volume here. It was like about 193 area. So and we just probably stop there, hold there, and probably try to go up again. So... Um, I'm, th- I'm thinking the market's actually going to move higher here, uh, but um, since how this week's volume goes, if we go into Friday and volume just really lackluster, chances are I'll go back to neutral again. But if volume's halfway decent today and tomorrow, I'll probably hold my position over the weekend. So um, volume's kind of real key here. So um, we can move on if you want. Okay, you we got, got about, about uh, one, one minute before the break here. So uh, just uh, make sure and let me uh, get back with uh, you. Let's see. Uh, how about Winnebago? WGO. All right. The, the thrill of the that open road with incredibly high gas prices. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, kind of the same thing here. Selling Climax happened, it looks like, about January 20th. As far as volume goes, uh, made a lower low the next day. Uh, came back down, tested that low in uh, end of February there. Did so in much lighter volume, couldn't get through that low. Um, probably going to go back to the previous high of February. It looks like about the first week in February, up around 70 range. Uh, so what happens there depends on volume. Uh, if you got good volume going into that high, the higher volume than the mid-February high is probably going to be resistance if you got uh uh, higher volume uh, test that high, then we're probably going to go back to the previous high of uh, early January, up around looks like about seventy eight, seventy nine. So, um, so I'm thinking at least we're going to go to seventy here, and there's a good chance we maybe get to seventy nine. Okay, if you got a chance to uh, send me that uh, uh, chart you were talking about uh, during the last segment, I sent you another symbol uh, in the email, so we can do that during. We'll be back in a minute with uh, Tim right, Ward we'll at port-oracle.com. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And we are back with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle. And uh, I got your uh, inflation chart here, so you can go ahead and talk about that. All right. Um, this is a really a big time frame. It's a monthly chart, and the chart goes back to 2013. And uh, it shows it's inflation-deflation ratio and uh, ping, uh, 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 no, Pring, uh, he's been around for years. I forgot his first name. Um, but anyhow, he created this. Pardon? Pardon? Martin? Uh, Pring, the guy's name P R I N G. He wrote yeah, several Martin books. Pring. And, yeah, Martin Pring. He created yeah. this uh, chart, inflation deflation rate. Well, actually, he created the, the two uh, indicators, and I combined them and made a ratio out of it. And, um, and so it works pretty well judging the inflation deflation uh, as a ratio and you can see in, in big down markets this this ratio falls and if you notice we've pretty much been going sideways basically since 2016 and I, I got a monthly Bollinger band on it if you're above the Bollinger bands usually a bullish sign if you're below it's bearish and I um, put uh, some of the Bollinger bands and also we've been kind of squeezing the Bollinger band here which is that's the bottom indicator. When it's low, it means that Bollinger bands are kind of pinching. When it's high, they're all spread apart. And back in, it looks like about December of 2021, they started coming together and suggesting a big move is coming when the Bollinger bands get tight. The, what that, you know, price, what that means is price uh, is very narrow. And that suggests at some point we're going to start prices are going to start spreading apart. That could be an uptrend or a downtrend. In this case, I thought it would be an uptrend and uh, because I had other indicators saying eventually these gold markets are going to start to rally, and that's what's happening here. And uh, just over the last couple of weeks, um, since this is a monthly chart, uh, we did get above the mid-Bollinger band on the monthly time frame, putting this uh, deflation, inflation-deflation ratio uh, in an uptrend. And we also closed above a trend line connecting the highs going back to 2016. We just closed above uh, that, I think it was last week, on that trend line. So we definitely got a breakout to the upside. And the top window is the RSI of this ratio. And anything above 50 suggests the market is an uptrend, and we're like 59 right now. So there's a lot of evidence that we're, uh, we're busting up to the upside. And that basically, uh, we started... Uh, really kind of busting up, uh, we, you know, we had a, in 2020, we started to get above the trend line, fell a little bit below it and came back above it, but it's been in a narrow range since 2016, so we're probably going to start doing an impulse-type wave uh, that look, may look similar to the decline that started back in 2014 and in 2016, that was a downtrend. I think something opposite of that may happen here and. uh uh, this whole thing may just be start to rocket up. Rocket might be the wrong word, but trending up. So, and inflation. Uh, the way I'm expecting here, 
where this inflation deflation ratio uh, should continue higher in the coming weeks, if not months. So it's more of a longer term. The only reason why I say that is it has such a huge base. This base is, is what, six years long. You know, it really didn't have uh, inflation deflation ratio. Really hadn't done anything for six years. Just pretty much moved sideways. Uh, so that builds a big base for an impulse wave, and I think the impulse wave will be up. So I'm thinking this ratio will probably at least go back to the 2014 highs, which is 0.7. Uh, you know, could go higher. Uh, hard to say, but we're in the early stages of this uh, ratio going higher. So there's a lot of stuff saying we're in an uptrend here. So. And it's just beginning. Is so, there now? If, if, yeah, if the inflation deflation ratio goes up, most likely you know gold stocks and gold will go up with it. That's what I'm implying here. So, kind of in the first inning, right? Yeah, we're in the first inning. You know, I really like I said before it. You know, we really haven't done anything since 2016. It's just base that went up, went down, went up, but really didn't move much. And when you get that Bollinger Band pinching on a monthly time frame, you know, something a little a longer term is, is starting to uh, come to uh, fruitation here. So, um, yeah, it looks good for, you know, the next couple of years, put it that way, just because of the, such a big time frame of basing. So, yeah, that's the reason why I wanted to show you this chart. It's just another angle of uh, how the market, you can view the, uh, the gold market. Got a question so, from somebody in our uh, trading room here. He says, uh, do you know what this actually tracks? Um, no. Okay. Uh, I think Pring, if you go to Pring's website or you Google him, uh, he'll tell you what it is. Oh, yeah. I'll do that at the break. Um, lastly, we've got one last stock uh, to take a look at here, and that is TASK, T-A-S-K. TASK. Stuff. Uh, there we go. All right. All right. Task I had a selling climax. Looks like about you know eyeballing here uh, January twentieth. Volume, you know, jumped like three hundred percent, four hundred percent from. So that was exhaust moved to the downside. Made a little bit lower low. Couldn't get through that low because energy already dissipated to the downside. So it can't really go down. So it's going to try to go up. Well, the first resistance is the gap area. Well, that gap uh, had huge volume because that was selling climax low, and so it can't get through the gap. Uh, got a point, you know, pointed there as a gap retest. So if it can't get through the gap, it'll go down to the next uh, support level, which is basically a selling climax low again. Well, it can't get through that. Uh, tested that low on much lighter volume. So we're now we're back up uh, to the gap area again. Well. You notice we're not backing away from the gap, and also we're starting to test that gap or the last high, which is where uh, that high basically in uh, looks like February 10th. We're starting to test that on a higher volume. If you look at the volume over the last couple three days here, the volume really kicked up. And so my my thoughts that volume is going to be higher on the test of that mid February high, and this is a Second time we're testing that gap again. The more times you test the gap, the more re resistance, the less resistance it has. So I'm thinking we're going to move higher here and probably go up to the next resistance area, which is basically that consolidation back in January, early January, uh, you know, up around that 50 range. So um, past to me, you know, it's, it's 34 now, but um, it looks good. It's probably going to go higher here. So. And the next resistance against the 50, I think it's probably we're going to come close to that somewhere in that, you know, 45, 50 range. And what happens there, we'll have to see what the volume looks like. But if you notice, volume's picking up, and that's what this, you know, rally needs. Needs volume to pick up, and consolidation is you need volume to be lighter. So this, that, well, this I want to thank looks pretty good. I wanted to thank you being on once again. Uh, Tim Orr to the Ord-Oracle.com. I'll see you in a couple more weeks. All right. Thank you. Bet. Be back in a minute, folks.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Turn, wrap up another excellent edition of our trading hour. Uh, we're down about uh, 20 points on the S&P cash. Again, uh, got a few things going on uh, Tuesday. We've got Apple um, with its dog and pony. So you may see next week a little bounce if they can get anything going. But uh, 4,400 uh, from options and all my chart work, uh, as I said yesterday, uh, look kind of like a wall, and we're starting to see more of that in options as we set up for options expiration. Generally, quad witching uh, months like this are not as good, but you get a general indication or a general range, which I had in the newsletter this morning. So you do see that. But uh, off 20 on the S&P, Dow's down 58, NASDAQ's off 197. Uh, if you are interested in that uh, chart uh, from Martin Pring that uh, Tim was talking about, if you email me, I'll send you a link uh, to the web page that explains it and tells you where it's at. And you can see a, long, uh, a, a live version of it. Uh, if you're interested in any of the charts uh, that uh, Tim talked about today, uh, I've got them all. You just email me at path at tfnn.com and I'll send you a zip with all of them in it. Um, so we can get that done. Uh, anyway, as we start looking, uh, volume actually, like I said, uh, not bad. 8.8 .8 billion shares as we get ready for the last hour of the trading day, but probably not enough in you know, the 15 or 16 billion that you're looking 
for a uh, giant sign of strength in this market to go blow through 4450. So at the moment, uh, probably at trading range, uh, again, we're getting into the options expiration cycle mid w next week. And you've got a little bit in technology with Apple on Tuesday. They always tend to push that. It is a large position. But uh, I'm kind of thinking that maybe you go sideways in technology and maybe you go much lower in the S&P. Not a lot of shorts out there in the market right now. So any kind of surprise could be big to the downside. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat channel.